Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. Today is Saturday, October 5th, and we have a new tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico. The name is Milton. Now, Milton will be affecting a large portion of the peninsula of Florida early next week, particularly Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday morning, and it could affect southeastern and southern Georgia and extreme southeast South Carolina. Let's take a look though. First of all, the power outage is still in the wake of Hurricane Helene. Uh, the power is slowly being restored across many areas across central Georgia up into South Carolina and uh, western North Carolina, but uh, we're still seeing the effects of Helene. Also, the Ogeechee River will be uh, up around 14 feet near the uh, dangerous flood level areas uh, by Monday with more rain perhaps on the way. It's a function as to where this storm will go. So let's take a look at the uh, forecast map from the National Hurricane Center. This is Tropical Storm Milton and this is the map I'll be following to avoid confusions. Uh, let's stick with the National Hurricane Center. Actually, you know, they're the best, okay? Anyway, uh, expecting to see 100 mile an hour winds already by 7 o'clock on Monday uh, in the evening and uh, 110 miles per hour by 7 a.m. on Tuesday going into Wednesday, uh, still up to about 110 miles per hour approaching the west central coast of Florida. But that's not just the uh, coast of west central Florida. All of uh, the f western coast of Florida will be affected by this storm with the potential for hurricane force winds over that entire area and then the storm itself going right over central Florida, right over Orlando and into off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Florida, and then moving east of the Georgia and south and south of the South Carolina coast. However, we might be close enough where we'll start seeing some back flow winds moving across our area and some rain. Let's first of all take a look at uh, the energy supply associated with this storm, the water temperatures. And again, the water temperatures are very warm here in the Gulf of Mexico, a touch cooler than they were with Hurricane Helene. Uh, we saw 30 and 31 uh, degrees Celsius, which is the upper 80s, mid to upper 80s. Now we're seeing 29 and 30 degree water temperatures Celsius in the Gulf of Mexico. That's in the middle 80s. Plenty of energy to work with. Hurricanes, all, all they need is 75 to 80 degree temperature to work with Fahrenheit uh, and they're in the middle 80s so a lot of energy there to go with the storm. Well with that uh, let's take a look at the satellite imagery and this is the satellite imagery of this afternoon from our current weather satellite the GOES-16. Would you like to see the uh, new weather satellite the GOES-19, GOES-U or GOES-19 and uh, this is the uh, uh, satellite view from GOES-19, brand new weather satellite. It's not in operation yet, but it's in the testing mode. And there you can see the uh, storm itself uh, rotating over here in the western Gulf of Mexico. And there are the clouds that are continuing to stream across Georgia and the southern South Carolina, producing our cloudy skies that we're having right now, even some light rain uh, flow, uh, flowing across the area. But uh, let's go back to the, the maps themselves and look at the potential rainfall because that's going to be important once again. And so with that being said, let's take a look at this. This is the GFS forecast, uh, the total uh, potential rainfall that could fall from tropical storm, potentially Hurricane Milton. Uh, this will be through um, basically Tuesday through early morning on Thursday and it's forecasting quite a bit of rain across central and north central portions of the Florida Peninsula, the western portions of Florida Peninsula, anywhere from 8 to 10 inches, 11 inches there. Uh, over here in the Jacksonville area, perhaps up to 13 inches of rain. Uh, here in southeastern Georgia, in and around St. Simons and Brunswick, maybe 4 to 5 inches of rain. Uh, then up into the uh, my finger slipped. Going up here into the uh, Savannah, here in the Savannah area, we, we could see an inch and a half. Now, this is according to the GFS. What about the, uh, uh, how come it didn't do that? This was supposed to do that. Dang it. Okay, looking at the predicted rainfall uh, from the global models, the GFS or the global forecast system, the American model shows quite a bit of rain expected. This is basically from uh, Tuesday through Thursday morning expected rainfall. Very heavy rains uh, in this area across the western coast of Texas, anywhere from what, about 8 to 10 inches of rain possibly in some of these areas. And then very heavy rains per 
a potential for northeastern portions of Florida in and around the Jacksonville area. Look at that. Uh, anywhere from uh, 11 to 13 inches of rain. Uh, wow, even up to an incredible amount of rain around St. Augustine of around 17 to 18 inches of rain. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling as how much moisture is associated with all that energy, though, in the Gulf of Mexico. That's You can't rule out these numbers. Uh, up in the uh, southeastern Georgia, in and around the Brunswick area, uh, three to five inches possible there. And in the Savannah area, uh, one to two inches of rain. And then coastal southeastern uh, South Carolina, about an inch or so of rain potential. What about the uh, ECMWF, the European model? And uh, that's showing the storm going just a touch further north. And with that being said, the rain totals will be a little bit higher uh, off to the north uh, here in the greater Savannah area, about an inch or two of rain, but further south into the Brunswick and St. Simons area. Again, about uh, three to five inches of rain could possibly fall out there, but uh, the ECMWF is not so uh, hard on the Jacksonville area, showing seven to eight inches of rain in that region there. That's hard to believe there uh, in and around Gainesville, Florida, just west, northwest of Gainesville, anywhere. Uh, I don't buy 24 inches of rain, but, you know, there's a lot of moisture out here in the Gulf of Mexico, so uh, and the energy is very high out in that region. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So the rainfall potential could be very, very high. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. It's kind of early yet to say uh, what's going on. On my website, savannapat.name, you can follow the storm. Uh, here you can see the... Uh, uh, forecast of the National Hurricane Center. If you click on that, it'll take you directly to the National Hurricane Center. And uh, uh, forecast for us, expected to see a, a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday. Monday, mostly sunny, then the sky clouding up again on Tuesday. Wednesday, could be rain. Depends on where Milton goes. If it goes further south, we won't have any rain. If it goes further north, we'll have moderate to heavy rains and strong winds. Not, nothing like Helene. The winds in the Georgia and South Carolina area will be nothing like what we saw in Helene. However, for central portions of Florida, it looks really bad right now, uh, keeping an eye on that. And then after the storm passes on through, it's going to pull down some cool, dry air from the north, and that's going to cool us off with highs in the middle 70s. 70s and lows in the middle 50s for the end of next week. And that probably will go right into the weekend with some very, very fine weather. But until then, we got to get through Tropical Storm slash Hurricane Milton. I'm right here on your YouTube channel, Savannah Pets, or savannahpat.name is my website. My uh, YouTube channel is Pat's Weather and Nature page. So thank you for watching and I'll see you later.